Hi, dear feminist, and welcome to the fourth episode of this podcast. My name is Samira. My name is Bente. And my name is Miriam. How was your weekend? Yeah, pretty long. T- yeah, a long <laughs> weekend we had. Yes. Yeah, we I had an extra two days. Yeah. Oh, so Thursday good. and Friday. Yes, it was nice. Yes, I didn't really do much. I only like worked and did some school stuff. Oh, yeah, I and I got new for me. pots for my plants. And they're very cute and adorable and I love them. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> nice. I enjoyed the sun and I had a mm. yeah, full Corpo nice weekend. And I lost literally everything. That's the only sad, sad that's thing. Sad. That's, that's great. That's yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I want to oh. win. I'm competitive, but it's okay. It was nice. It was fun that's game. an important It was game. a fun game. Nice, nice. Yesterday I went to a high tea with my family. Oh, that nice. was really Fine. nice. But I was so full after it. I was yeah. Like, uh. It looked nice. You, yeah. you put a picture on your Instagram. Yeah, it, it was really nice. You did? I completely missed that. <gasps> it looks very yeah. sweet. Yeah, a lot of sweet things. No, oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a s- big sweet tooth, so oh. I was like, I'm fine. Well, then, it's, then it's good. Then yeah. it's good. Having a time of your life. <laughs> I had a time of my definitely. Just as Abba says. Okay, shall we start? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. In this episode, I will be taking you through the third wave of the feminism movement, which started back in 1996 to approximately 2010. In this period of time, people started to let go of gender stereotypes and the freedom to make your own decisions got bigger and bigger. The economic independence for women was a fact now that they have conquered their place on the job market. The empowerment, um, economic emancipation and the individual freedom of choice are all part of the third feminism wave. With this new and liberating femininity ideal, we renounce the so-named victimization from the second wave. Before we continue, I would like to say that the division of the waves are subjective. One has the opinion there are only two waves in this emancipation movement. Some say we are still in the middle of the third wave. While others say we have been in the fourth wave since 2011. And especially like the third and the fourth wave, it's more for like Western countries. Around 1990, there were different opinions about the movement as well. There were even people who said the movement wasn't necessary anymore because the goals like women's suffrage, bigger representation of women in positions of power and the reproductive choices for women were achieved. This is called post-feminism. Sometimes it gets described as a way to show resistance against this movement. At other times they are spoken of a new radical way for young women to keep being occupied with the activism and theories for feminism. Besides this, there are also women who are still occupied with the goals of feminism. Think of wage equality between a man and a woman with the same job. Uh, and also economic independency. They don't want to call themselves a feminist because they don't fully support the sentimental value of feminism. What do you think about the dividing of the different waves and is it still necessary? Well, I for sure think feminism is still necessary because there are still differences. Maybe not as big of a difference um, in the Netherlands, for example, but in some countries it's definitely still necessary. Yeah, and I think still here too. I mean... Maybe for women it's better, but feminism isn't only about women. It's people who are yes. like treated less or seen as less. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's still we always we still need feminism. Um and also like the waves. I feel like every wave stands for something else. Um well we're also we're talking about like the fourth wave, it also stands for something different than the third wave. Um more suitable for the time period of now so yeah i think those waves are necessary i don't think we can say we only have like two waves because we're still going through the waves yeah i think um the third wave and the fourth wave are more comparable yeah but i do believe they're different waves. even though the third wave doesn't start until 1996 we are going to start this episode in 1989. In this year, Kimberly Crenshaw, an Afro-American professor of law, scholar and writer of topics as the Black Feminism, Legal Theory, Critical Race Theory and Race, Racism, as well as Civil Rights and the Law. Um, her work has been extremely important to the Critical Race Theory and their intersectionality. Um, intersectionality is a concept that has been created by Crenshaw. Her work has been extremely important for the critical race theory and the intersectionality. Intersectionality is a concept that has been created by Crenshaw. 
In the words of the Columbia Law School, um, and I quote, it is a term she coined to describe the double binding of simultaneous racial and gender prejudice. An example of this concept is shown in the movie Feminist of Were They Thinking on Netflix. A woman is telling her experience of how she, as a black woman, fits in two groups but isn't completely accepted in either. She doesn't fully fit in the group of black people as she gets discriminated for being a woman. And with the group of women, she gets discriminated for being black. This shows that a black woman gets discriminated differently compared to a white woman or a black man. Another woman who created an important sociological framework is Patricia Hill Collins. She's a social theoretician who researched several issues like race, nation, sexuality, gender, as well as social classes. The framework she created is called the Matrix of Domination, where there is looked at the structural domain of power and how this creates oppression in society. Colin calls it the organization of interlocking large-scale social institutions that shows the subordination of black women. I wonder, have you heard of these women before? I have not. I have not either. Me neither. No, I never heard of them before. No. I also haven't heard of these um, concepts before, like matrix of domination of intersectionality. Same. No, no. Never heard of them no. before. I, I don't know. Oh, there was a podcast. We, uh, we had to listen to that in the module before this. That you you watched the movie and I watched yeah. the podcast and they discussed Listened. it. Imagine, and I listened to that podcast and I think it's about they the talked a bit about it that if you start to accept um, mean comments against women, it only gets worse. Mm -hmm. So if you quit, like um, they had an example that if you keep going, it can even end up with murder, for example. And they accept it. And then the bottom is like a mean comment at the bus station, for example. And if you don't say anything about it, it will keep happening. And if you mm -hmm. be like, okay, you know what? I'll tell something about it. Or I'll tell you like, yo, shut up. Don't say that. Yeah. Eventually, it has results in... It helps way. to say yeah. something about yeah. it. Even though I would feel like sometimes it wouldn't help. Some, I mean, but not everyone, of course, but... Eventually... If it would help. Yeah. If that's what you're saying. Yeah. And they um, talk a bit about it in America. But that's the, uh, the way I remember that um, intersection. Oh Inter yeah, it's a difficult word. Yes. Um, uh, that's <laughs> really how I is. remember it. It's like a pyramid. Mm, something like yeah. that. Yeah. That makes sense. Thank you. No, you, did, you, <laughs> did, you didn't come up with it. <laughs> that is true. What I, I told you. You explained it. <laughs> we are now almost in the actual third wave of the feminism movement. But before we get there, we are going to talk a little bit about Anita Hill and Rebecca Walker. Um, Miriam, could you maybe tell us a little bit about Anita Hill? Of course. Anita Hill is an Afro-American female lawyer and professor of law from the United States who accused her former manager Clarence Thomas in 1991 of sexual intimidation. The jury at this hearing consisted of 14 white men who were trying to blame Anita Hill for the intimidation through accusations and appearance questions. Now we would call this victim blaming. The whole country was invested in this extended hearing. Due Clarence Thomas being nominated as candidate to take place of the first ever American judge, Thurgood Marshall, after his retirement. After the hearing, the Senate voted 52 of 100 votes for the nomination of Clarence Thomas, which means he took over Thurgood Marshall. This creates a new and furious revival of the feminist activism. Bente, could you give us some information about Rebecca Walker? Yes, Rebecca Walker is an Afro-American writer as well as a feminist. In 1992, she writes together with Alice Walker, also an Afro-American writer, and Mel Leventhal, a Jewish-American civil rights lawyer, a controversial article named Becoming the Third Wave. This is a response to the outrage within the feminist communities about the outcome of the hearing from Anita Hill. In this article, Walker says that the time has come to create a more inclusive feminism in the form of a third wave by learning about the shortcomings of the second wave. Sexual intimidation and sexual violence are topics that will have a high priority again in the third wave, due to the hearing from Anita Hill. The fight is far from over, is the sentence Rebecca Walker writes in her open letter. An open letter is a letter that is often addressed to one person, but meant to be published for a big audience. In this letter she calls up women to not be blind for patriarchal threats and explains the need for this new wave in the feminism movement. Now this new wave has started, it is affected by globalization and digitalization, since social media and online platforms created a new way of communication, organization possibilities and new ways to take action. 
people all around the world are now connecting with each other. A little fun fact about this. One of the first accessible social media platforms is the in 1997 founded Six Degrees, where people were able to create a profile with their email address and add friends. After this, there was Friendster in 2002 with the purpose of changing the way of communication between people. Have you heard of these platforms before? No. I have not. Never. I, like, I was born in 2002 and then yeah. <laughs> that came out. The yeah. first thing I heard of is like Hives, I think. Yeah, Hives yeah. or in the Netherlands we had... What's it called? MSN? Yeah, MSN. Yeah, I heard of that. I, it. It wasn't something I did because I think I was too young. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. definitely was too young for MSN. Was this in the Netherlands? These sites? I don't... Heist? I do not no, believe but so, ones, but the MS... the ones you've called. Oh, uh, the ones I've called. Because um, I've never heard of it. I don't think so because it's spelled in English. Yeah. Because the original name is Six Degrees in French there. But I also didn't know it was already, the first one was already in 1997. True. That's early. Because I thought it was way later. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I even think 2002 is kind of early. Mm hmm I don't know when MSN started, though. I don't know. Or probably. I, I have I no idea. I think that was in the 90s, I believe. Somewhere in the 90s. Yeah. Well MSN yeah. was more of a, uh, of a chatting Yeah, it's more thing. like an email thing. Yes. Yeah. Hives, I believe, was a little later because <sighs> I... I same. Yeah. There were so many games. Oh, yeah, especially so the games. It was awesome. Yeah. I'm just curious on what I put on Hives. Like, I oh want to see, God. like, what Same. did I put on Hives? Because I can't remember. But I like, remember one thing. I had a fight with a, a friend from school and her sister got angry on me on Hives. And then <laughs> I went to school the next day and we were okay, the, the, the girl and I. And yeah. But she was angry at me and I was like, I, I don't even remember what it was for. <laughs> And how, how old were you? I think I was in group six or seven, so that I would be like 10, 11. Well, I do remember, like, I vaguely remember Hives because, well, I'm a bit younger than yeah. both of you. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't really, I kind of know the layout, and but I don't know what I did. On, I only know that I did the games. I didn't have a phone back then, so I just did it on the, on the computer, laptop, yeah. on the laptop remember a lot and yeah that's all i know i don't know <laughs> anything else i know only the logo uh, I, I do know that one i but remember the things i i remember a few things i posted i <laughs> i <re> this <laughs> is so embarrassing i really wanted to be cool but there was um the rap from Nicki minaj super bass yeah oh and yeah. i posted that clip on hives and i was like oh my god i'm practicing this rap <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's so stupid and I, I just felt so cool I it's don't remember uh, much I think I, I played a lot of games oh I love a the games. games the one pet party do you remember that one oh I'm, that's I'm like, I'm like thinking what, like what did I do oh. I think if I see it I'm like yeah that's yeah, the game I, I played but I, I can't remember that well pet party was the best game I ever played another fun fact for this time period that is completely unrelated to anything i've said this entire episode but i did think it was important to mention um in 1998 the house of representatives or how we call it in dutch the tweede kamer got a new chairwoman uh, which was the first chairwoman actually um her name was jeltje van nieuwenhoven what do you think about this it's good i think i think it's good for the the politics yeah, there's also a thing that uh, Ginsburg, where we talked about in like the second episode, uh, she said that women need to be in every room where a decision gets made. So I think this was like a first step to that women are also there to make decisions for more That's people good. and not only men. Yeah, because it should definitely not be men making all the decisions about women no definitely not but it's it still like happens it's too still much like yeah Our, uh, there's a story so we're gonna talk about in the last episode yeah in can't there. wait i'm excited to be continued Yay. Yeah. so with this we want to end the episode what did you think of the episode I thought it was fun. Yeah, same. Yeah, I, I researched the episode and I just, I, I don't know, I was just excited for the episode. And also for the next one. I really like the next one as well. So, Ooh. I'm excited. so do we have a little teaser for the next one? Um, next episode, we're going to talk about the LGBTQ movement and the queer theory. Um, also about reproductive rights, etc. So Nice. 
thanks for listening and hopefully till next time. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Yes. Go ahead. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. <laughs>